Hello, my name is Louise and I'm a second year undergrad student studying mechanical and electrical engineering at the University of Bristol. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Louise Does Life, where I talk about studying, productivity, minimalism, happiness, and what we're going to talk about today, which is sustainability. Today, I specifically want to talk to you about recycling because it turns out it's a lot more complicated than some people think. And I think it will help you to understand why we have a plastic crisis and what we can do about it. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what recycling is, recycling contamination, aspirational recycling, closed loop recycling, and what we can do about it. So firstly, what is recycling? Recycling is the process of converting waste materials into new materials and objects. Sounds great, right? Recycling has always been seen as this really positive thing because it helps to reduce landfill, helps to reduce pollution, and helps to reduce the demand for virgin materials. However, the first issue with recycling is that we've been led to believe that it's this wonderful solution to all of our problems. The rhyme, reduce, reuse, recycles, is actually in order. Recycling should be our last resort. This is because if we want our footprint on the planet to be as small as possible, we should reduce and reuse first, because those have a small impact than recycling. It's much more effective to just produce less waste in the first place than try and think about what we're going to do with it. Not only does recycling take more time and energy than reducing or reusing wood, but a lot of materials actually aren't recyclable, including lots of plastics, which is why seeing recycling as a big one solution to all of our problems is not true. If you're interested, I highly recommend you start reading the back of your packaging to find out whether it's recyclable or not. I think you'll be shocked to see just how much of it isn't recyclable. Sainsbury's are really great at this on all of their home brand packaging. It says on the back whether it's recyclable or not. And even if something isn't recyclable, this helps to inform the customer and give them a better idea of what materials are recyclable and what aren't. And it also helps them to make informed purchases if they're looking to buy recyclable materials. This is something I believe all brands should have to do in an ideal world. But for example, did you know that the plastic bags that you buy salad leaves in actually aren't recyclable? And so even if you put them in the recycling bin, they're just going to end up in landfill. Okay, so our first topic is recycling contamination. Not only are lots of plastics not recyclable, but a lot of recyclable plastics aren't being recycled. It is estimated that only 9% of plastic that's ever been produced has been recycled, another 12% has been incinerated, and the remaining 79% is still in existence somewhere on the planet today. This is partly because of recycling contamination. Recycling contamination is when an item is deemed to be contaminated because of uncleanliness, such as foods residue or by mixed materials. It will be sent from the recycling centre to landfill. This means that even if you put your salad bag into the recycling, it cannot be recycled and it will just be sent to a landfill facility. Furthermore, if a load of recycling is deemed to be contaminated to the point where it's not worth sorting, then that whole load can be sent to landfill. In some cities, one contaminated item can deem an entire load contaminated. This means that not only are your salad bags not being recycled, but your salad bag is preventing other recyclable items from being recycled. This is because lots of companies view recycling as a business and they make money by selling on those recyclable materials. If it's going to take more time and money for the workers to sort through those materials than they would get from the selling of those materials, then they deem it not worth their time and so they send the entire thing to landfill. And this leads us on to talking about aspirational recycling. Aspirational recycling is when you, as an individual, think that something should be recyclable and so you put it in your recycling bin, whether it is recyclable or not, because you believe that once it gets to the recycling facility, if it's not recyclable, it'll simply be filtered out. And so the best thing you can possibly do is to put it into the recycling so that it has the potential to be recycled. However, because of recycling contamination, aspirational recycling can actually cause more harm than good. By you putting your salad bag into the recycling, you're stopping other recyclable plastics from being recycled. Lots of recycling companies go as far as to suggest, when in doubt, chuck it out. However, another reason why a lot of recyclable plastic isn't being recycled is simply because of failures in our recycling system and the failures of companies and countries to take responsibility for their own waste. If you want to learn more about this and see the reality of it, I really suggest watching the BBC documentary series, War on Plastic. A researcher from MIT went as far as to suggest that we shouldn't even try and recycle plastic and that we should send it all to landfill where at least it's being well managed. Because did you know that a lot of the plastic that ends up in the sea is coming from failed recycling, not from landfill? He suggests that instead of devoting our time and energy to this recycling system which clearly isn't working, we should devote it to climate change instead. I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to recycle at all, but it's something worth thinking about. And definitely please don't recycle aspirationally. And the last thing I want to talk about is closed loop recycling. Now, there are two types of recycling, open loop and closed loop. Open loop is the type you're probably most familiar with. This is what happens when you put waste out on your curb. This is when items are broken down into new materials which can be used to make other items. And typically they will go on to be used for whatever there's demand for recycled materials for, and so they won't end up being the same product that they were originally. However, the issue with this is that open loop recycling is often associated with degradation. 
A simple example is that paper can only be recycled so many times because it reduces in quality every time it's recycled. And so for this reason, open loop recycling is often known as downcycling. Closed loop recycling, on the other hand, involves collecting really similar items and recycling them into their original product. Aluminium cans are a really great example. Aluminium cans are entirely recyclable and they can be recycled over and over again to keep making more and more aluminium cans. However, as wonderful as this may sound, aluminium cans are a bit of an exception because they're one of the few products so widely used that's so easily recyclable and therefore it makes sense for them to be recycled in this closed loop way. For most items, it's actually a lot more difficult to recycle them and to have this idea of closed loop recycling where the materials are turned back into their original product would require sending the materials back to their original um, producer so they can be recycled in specific ways. But here are three reasons why closed loop recycling is better than open loop recycling. Firstly, as I just said, there's this reduction in degradation. By collecting similar items and using them to remake more of those items, there's less likely to be a reduction in quality. This is partly because they may not need to be put through such intense treatments. For example, imagine if you could send your mobile phone back to the mobile phone company and they could take it apart and they could probably use some of those components and materials without having to put them through many processes at all and this would really help to maintain their quality and to keep those materials in the supply chain. Degradation is also caused by having mixed materials so for example there are lots of different types of plastic and when plastic is recycled some of those different types will end up together and this actually reduces the quality of the plastic. It can make it become more brittle, less durable, this is why sometimes when you see things made from recycled materials they don't seem to be as good quality. But if you were to send things back to their original producer and they recycled in this closed loop way, there wouldn't be that contamination of mixed materials. And so those materials would maintain their original high quality. The second reason why closed loop recycling is great is because materials are less likely to be lost in the recycling system. For example, there's actually some really valuable materials inside of your phone. But if you were to send this to a local recycling center, they don't have the facilities to fish out those tiny bits of valuable materials and so it ends up just going to waste. But if you could send this to a specialised recycling plant where it's going to be turned back into those original materials and as I said it may not need to go through such intense treatments then those materials are much more likely to be saved and so there'll be a big reduction in waste. And lastly the third benefit of closed loop recycling is less of a need for virgin materials. Virgin materials means making materials from scratch, for example making plastic from oil instead of making plastic from recycled plastic issue with our current recycling system is there actually isn't that much demand for these recycled materials. When you go and buy a bottle of water off the shelf, it's more likely to be made from virgin materials than recycled materials. So where are those recycled materials going? How are we expected to deal with our current plastic crisis where there's too much plastic on the earth already when we're constantly pumping more and more plastic into this system? The idea of closed loop recycling is that the materials would go round and round, but how can we achieve that when we're constantly pumping in more and making the circle bigger and bigger? There are more plastics in the circle than we actually need already. So, how do we solve this crisis? Well, one solution is to make companies responsible for their waste. Let's take Coca-Cola as the obvious example. They are producing all of these bottles and cans of Coke every year, and that waste is ending up either in landfill or in the environment. And therefore, they're contributing directly to the waste issues that we have and to the harm that's being caused to the environment. The first way to make companies responsible for their waste is to make them pay for the recycling. It should be possible to work out how much it costs to recycle one aluminium can, and so therefore Coca-Cola should have to pay the government that price for every can they produce. As I said, currently recycling facilities make money by selling recycled materials, and so they're these businesses, and so they won't do things if they're not economically viable. But if Coca-Cola was paying for the recycling, then that wouldn't be such of a case, and hopefully then recycling companies would take more time to sort through this waste and recycle as much as possible, because they're not reliant on making money, because they're already being paid money. Recycling should be seen as an obligation and not a business. Secondly, and the much better option, is for companies to collect their waste and recycle it themselves. An excellent example of this is the Lush Black Pots. When you finish with this, you can take it back to the Lush store where it will be collected, broken down and remade into a new black pot. What Lush is doing here is taking responsibility for their waste. And in my opinion, that's a great selling point. It actually makes me want to shop there more. I would love to see more companies doing this. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I'm sure no one is as interested in recycling as I am, but I really hope you've learned something. My name is Louise. And as I said, if you want to learn more about me, you can find me at Louise's Life on Instagram and YouTube. Thank you for watching.